between 1968 and 1972 from Wabasha here all the way down the river to Rock Island, Illinois, a distance of 261 miles, there was only one nesting pair of bald eagles left. That same stretch of river that we now call the Upper Mississippi National Wildlife and Fish Refuge today has over 313 nesting pairs of bald eagles. Now here, this is Angel, you guys. She is an adult female bald eagle. The National Eagle Center's mission is to educate about eagles and the Mississippi River habitat. When uh, eagles were rare and endangered, this area of the Upper Mississippi was one place in the winter where you could come and be fairly certain that you would see uh, live eagles in the wild. I'm Rolf Thompson. I'm the executive director of the National Eagle Center here in Wabasha, Minnesota. People in Wabasha realized that uh, people were coming here to, uh, to see this phenomenon because they couldn't see eagles anywhere else. And so a group got an idea to build a viewing platform right here on the river and, uh, and then volunteers started hanging out answering questions on Saturday afternoons. One thing led to another and uh, the, the town realized that this was uh, an asset that they could uh, develop. We have open water right outside our windows here all winter long. It's because of Lake Pepin. Lake Pepin is just a big old widening of the Mississippi River that then comes down to a narrower channel. And because of that large volume of water trying to pour through that narrower channel, that keeps a five mile stretch of fast moving water out here that doesn't freeze over. So it's a great place for eagles to migrate to and, and find food. I'm Bill Dunn, I'm a volunteer at the National Legal Center in Wabasha. I live in Reed's Landing, and Reed's Landing is one of the best places in the world, probably, to watch bald eagles. Yesterday I counted about 8 o'clock in the morning, and in about a mile stretch along the river, I counted 308 eagles. We do house five permanently injured eagles. These are all birds that have been in the wild, uh, they've had some sort of problem, and they're not able to live on their own any longer. The bird directly behind me is Harriet. Uh, she is our most famous eagle here in Wabasha, Minnesota. Uh, Harriet has been on many national TV shows. She's also been featured on the Minnesota Support Our Troops license plates. Bald eagle belongs to a family of eagles called the fish or sea eagle family. They are primarily found near aquatic environments. They have a big beak. The big beak is used to rip apart fish. The golden eagle has a much smaller beak, a much smaller tool, because it's not feeding on fish, it's feeding on rabbits and squirrels that it can rip apart very easily apart with a smaller tool. All the crushing, all the killing power, or a raptor or a bird of prey is in the talons. That's how they crush and kill the prey. In fact, each one of their talons, and they have three that face forward and one that faces back, each one of them can exert over 400 pounds per square inch of crushing pressure in each one of the talons. Could an eagle carry a one-year-old? No. <laughs> you guys may have seen the video, the recent YouTube video of the golden eagle carrying away the small child. That's fake. A bird angel size, so she weighs 10 and a half pounds. She can only carry about two and a half to three pounds. We say that eagles have a strong nest site fidelity, meaning they keep coming back to the same nest site year after year. And when they come back to that nest, 
they're gonna be working on the nest by adding material. If it's the first year, it's gonna be four or five, six feet in diameter the first year and one to two feet high. But every year they come back in February, they're gonna be adding another one to two feet of new material every single year. So it's not uncommon then for them to be maybe six, 800 pounds in weight. By putting branches in there year after year, that's basically telling the other partner that I'm a good provider, I can find nice sticks, and we can help work on this nest together, and that shows that there's a connection there. Most likely what is happening, the male is gathering all of these awesome pieces of branches, bringing them up to the nest, putting them how he wants them, and she will rearrange everything. <laughs> E.T. was introduced right after World War II to get rid of mosquitoes. By the time it got to the female eagle, what it did for her was affect her ability to process calcium. Because of that calcium interference, when she went to lay her eggs, they were often deformed or so thin and deformed that when she went to incubate her own eggs, she was crushing them under her own weight. And that's when we came so close to losing the eagle. One of the main things that rehab facilities see is lead poisoning. We unfortunately see an increased number of eagles coming in right after the deer hunting season. Hunter shoots a deer, throws the gut piles out for the predators to feed upon, thinks they're doing a favor, for well, the eagle sees that, and we all know that eagles have eagle eyes. If they see that and feed on that, any fragments of lead in there can kill an eagle in just four to five days. I think we've been attracted to eagles for, for eons, literally, as long as uh, humans and eagles have been around uh, seeing each other, uh, we've been attracted to them. I think because they're such a, imagine seeing a, you know, a bald eagle with that beautiful white head and tail against a beautiful blue sky. I mean, that's an image that you just never forget. It's such a high flying bird. It has such stern looking look to it that it just seems like it's gonna be tough and defend our country, it just has that look to it. Um, but it also has such beautiful eyes that you can just look into. We've brought the eagle back from the brink of extinction and we're celebrating that. But at the same time, we also have to realize there's so many other creatures that still need our attention and respect. They may not be our national emblem. They may not be quite as good looking as an eagle, but you know what? They still deserve their place in that environment. We need to work to protect those creatures as well. The eagle can't survive in that environment out there by itself. There's a whole food chain. There's a whole web of life out there that it's incorporated into.